What up, everyone? Welcome to Other Space FM. My name is Nana. I'm Jason the Ape. And let's get into it, dude. We just came back from testing the other side with the Yuga Labs team and other community members out in L.A., and we definitely wanted to be able to share that experience with you all. Um, and uh, thank you all for joining us today. How you doing today, Jason? I'm stoked, man. It was uh, th this felt like something really important for us to recap. You know, we did host a Spaces uh, the day after because we did finally miss a Thursday uh, after a whole year of of doing it every Thursday, but for a good reason. We were with the Yuga family uh, testing out the other side, so we did do a Spaces on Friday. Uh, and, and it was a phenomenal spaces, almost three hours long of just kind of recapping so many various community members experiences. But we thought, you know, let, let's do a quick video, recap it ourselves as, as our individuals, uh, but also as other Space FM team, talk about some of our takeaways, some of our likes, you know, mm -hmm. and, and what we're looking forward to, maybe a quick speculation or, or, or two. Yeah, certainly. I mean, that space was awesome. It was great to hear other people in the community, just kind of what their experience was. But we've had a few days to process everything and um, would be great to just kind of break it down right after the experience. The team, shout out to the entire Yuga Labs team who really came together, put a recap video together um, shortly afterwards. And uh you know what we'll do? We'll go ahead and play that first and then maybe go back on this recap trailer and go through some of the different sections and maybe expand on your personal takes uh, and my personal takes on uh, each moment. So let me go ahead and bring up the recap and we'll go ahead and watch this first. What a video, right, dude. man. What a video. What a day. What a day. That was, to be honest with you, the, the coolest part of that to me was the, the I, I didn't even see cameras there. I was so engaged in the experience, to be honest, you know, so kudos to the, the people who put that together because that, that was really nice to look back and also to share with the community a little, little taste of what we got to experience. But yeah, that was dope. I know, man. Um, seeing that recap video definitely puts me back. And uh, let's talk about it. You know, a lot of us, um, we we had no idea on what to expect. I mean, I can speak for myself, uh, Jason, you and I, we were talking about, but we had no clue what to expect. Who would we be seeing uh, really just showing up kind of open eyed and you know, with zero expectations, all we knew that there was, there was going to be some other side tests. And then just like a day or two before we got the location, it was in uh, a studio in LA. Yeah. Um, so that was surprising in itself. I thought it would be oh, maybe man. like a conference room or something, but 
to pull up in this at the studios and you know get that's, checked in that was an experience that's when itself. your imagination starts to take off and and now <laughs> you're you're just like what could be back there you know and once we went through the the security check-in i was so excited that i i kind of took off and i was almost running and then i realized <laughs> like you know we're going through these sets and it's like a weird street with all these fake little houses and and you're like, where oh, yeah. are we? You the know, bungalows, and, yeah, then I, <laughs> and then I thought, did I get lost? Because I, I took off on everybody. So I slowed down and I saw Josh Ong and then I kind of like was waiting for a group to to build up. Right. And that's what we saw in that first intro of, uh, scene right there is when a bunch of us uh, came as a group to the intro of of the event, which is where. You, you had the beautiful smell of bored and hungry burgers kind of emanating <laughs> yeah. already through the air. And oh, that was a nice little touch. So even this little piece right here, that, that little snip right here, that's from the Legends of the Mar trailer that they uh, ended up showing. So that kind of gave us a little glimpse into one of the first parts of the trailer. But yeah, as you said, Here's uh, some footage of us. You see Rax, Nini, Josh Ong over here, Shulk, Electro, Electro, uh, Electro. She's uh, part of the Yuga team. Just, Just all dox being everybody able, real quick. Yeah, Rich Poor, <laughs> someone up. Um, but it was it was dope to to see a lot of friends. Met with some bored and hungry uh, burgers and food that we can just grab a bag and then. Ooh, oh, puppets. this was sick too, yeah. man. Javi um, and Marav the such incredibly talented individuals and these these puppets were next level the clothing on Marav's puppet was just insanely detailed yeah it's hard to like freeze frame it but these puppets were like very modular as well so you can take off the face and put another one onto it. So if you want to do stop motion or something, you'd be able to do that. Yeah. The top hat came off and like fitted perfectly. Um, but they, I know it took a lot for them to create these puppets. So they got to bring that and show it off to some of the community members, which was super cool. Yeah, yeah. Super See talented. The homie Zach right there, Brenswa. Uh I'm glad they got a little, uh, you know, video time in that video with their puppets because those things need to be shown. Hey, there we are together. Hey. hey. So this was like the very first part where we just got our food and then we got to see who else was there. Yeah. Um, and they kept like black curtains all around us. If there, When you walk into the studio, I would say about 75% of that studio was just covered in in black curtains so we were in this smaller area where we we're just drinking some food some beers uh some ape water a ton of ape water and that plays into later in the story for me yeah <laughs> that's true um but it was really cool to see a bunch of different people there uh, yeah a lot of different groups you have the 10k tfm squad that ended up rolling up bonsai nate uh as well as others that Many people who I haven't got to see in a while, but yeah. also new people. That a lot of I've new people met. for me. A lot of new people. And 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 shout out to Yuga for those like nice little uh, badges that we got. You know, I'll cherish that. Actually, I should go get out of my car so it doesn't melt. But I'll I'll still cherish <laughs> it even if it melts. Um, but that was cool because we got to see who was there. And you know, I didn't recognize everyone per se because we don't meet everyone all the time. But having some individuals there with their badges, uh, it was nice just to to meet some some community members. And uh, I thought that that was really cool how they gave us a little time to get to know each other and and mingle a little bit and say what's yeah. up. Because because at the end of the day, it's always about community, you know. And that's still if it's in, in the waiting room or in the metaverse, it's it's still the same thing. And to my understanding, this is the first time they've done anything like this, you know, where you have the development stages of building out this very ambitious metaverse, but also game, etc. And in a development stage, uh, they're starting to incorporate community feedback. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more as we showcase, like, you know, how Garga and Figgy got to come up and, and share everything. But uh, prior to going into that, they finally opened up one of the curtains 
where it was uh, a section where a bunch of different artboards uh, were were on display. And so we saw right. something like this, which really shows off like the key lighting of the swamp. You get to see like it looks like there's a stage over here, which I'm just noticing and which is interesting because they just acquired uh, Roar Studios, who is really pioneering something really yeah, cool we'll, things. In we'll the make metaverse. a different video about that alone. That, <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that alone deserves its own its own uh, conversation. But you know, look at you got a me bits over here walking. You got uh, Curtis over here. Lots of like this mutant that's looking crazy. <laughs> I, <laughs> but I thought just shows I, the cool lighting around. Yeah. You know? I, th I thought one of the cooler parts of this room and this experience was was how many uh, different mock-ups and, and types of art there was. So as we kind of went around this room, uh, they had all these panels up, like Sean was explaining, and each one was referencing uh, a, a tier, right? So acid, luster. Or an environment, um, yep. Yeah, environment. And and for me, I, I personally thought the botanicals were just stunning. Like, I've always been a fan, but it just appealed to me, the color scheme and everything. Uh, but simultaneously, you start to you start to paint a picture of what this can be, how how grand it can be, uh, what sort of like colorful dynamics and, and you know art styles they're going to have, and and none of them are going to be the same. Each each deed, oh yeah, uh, very will have quite yeah. Like that that's why this game is going to take a minute, is because once it comes out, there's going to be nothing else like it out there Whoa. because of how much unique art there is. I asked Figgy too. I'm like how long has this been in development? Because a lot of the art that we're seeing and conceptual art, it seems like you're going really in depth with, and what we're seeing are all environments, by the way. So this is just environments. This isn't like characters or certain games or anything like that. It's just environment artwork. And so uh, quickly wanted to point out some observations because for those that were watching the trailer, uh, it's really hard to kind of understand without context. So this bottom one right here was the bone environment. And you can see those like tusks coming out of the ground, but it's it's like the tusks were cracked and this blue glowing uh, thing is coming out of the bones. So it really kind of goes to showcase how like some of these lands and environments are very much alive with energy, even though... From the look of it, if you look at the bone environment, it's very dry, very dead. And uh, to see something like this where you're like, wow, it, the environment does change. It well, is yeah. dynamic. When you think about even the previous times we've seen the bone, it, it's looked quite different, right? So now yeah. you're seeing a night vision, a, a night perspective. And you got to realize like, oh, they're implying there's going to be a day and a night in this metaverse experience by by showing these cascading styles of art. Like Good point. Or seasons, right? Like Yeah, there's, there's, a, and, there's a lot more to this game than just a, a, a level, let's some say. Some people, uh, are, there's a Coda, Curtis, and uh, maybe a Voyager, I forget who that's, or I think it might have been Amoeba even, that's around this little bonfire. Yeah. Um, this is Obsidian. And notice one thing I took away from watching a lot of these artboards or just observing a lot of these artboards were some of these were in an enclosed environment, right? And when you look at another deed, there's not very many enclosures, you know, where it's like, oh, it looks like as if there's no sky in here. It's all covered. Mm. So it made me think about those little doors on each one of the deeds that look like it goes into something. Yeah. Uh, and maybe what we're seeing here and is the scale of how large these enclosed spaces could be like it, as if each deed had a place that had almost like a home. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and talking about scale is something we'll talk about later as the experience connects, because scale of these deeds is, is insanely important to, to reference later on. Yeah. You can see the little, that's beautiful you know, figure right here yeah. that really shows the scale of some of these environments. So, you know, we got to go around, observe a lot of this stuff. Um, things that this is what was kind of cool is like, they would show parts of the environment and just the different forms of it, even like a side view, a top-down view, 
And to me, it kind of showcased that these objects in the environment change mm -hmm. over time mm -hmm. too, like, or by time of day or maybe by the Odiac and the season. Well, and to go back to this comment, Vicky said maybe obsidian is underground, right? So maybe there's some above ground, maybe there's some floating islands, maybe there's some below ground. You know, th this is an imaginary world. I don't think there's too many limits to, to where it can go, right? That's yeah. so beautiful, man. Yeah. So it says uh, splinter or something right here. I can't even yeah, splinter. read it. But, um, you know, these are, there's some parts of the other D that we have yet to be exposed to obviously oh yeah oh yeah. Uh, yeah and they're going all each environment has a different feeling a different color palette a different style of objects well, stop go back real quick a little bit so right here in this backboard this was another cool little mock-up and and this is what i loved about this room setup was they told us not very much right so anyone that thinks we got like tremendous alpha you guys are more or less seeing what we did. Uh, these were a lot of mock-ups and kind of like character creations and generalizations, right? And and they were stunning, but it wasn't anything like this is, you know, what it's going to be like, go buy Acid Land because it's the coolest or anything like that. They were all just visually cool. It took us on a narrative of like what, what they're working on, what they're conceptualizing. And a lot of it was just... It was beautiful, but I expect it to be so tremendously different based on this to like, you know, usable result versus when they, they say we're done building, which I don't think they'll ever say they're done building, by the way, is something I took away from this. And it could be changed over time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. all, all I could say is every single environment looked like they have a tremendous amount of art Mm -hmm. and production that's going behind this if they are yeah. finding ways to design and make all of this come to life so yeah uh i think the the depth Ooh, you know is kind of what i'm taking away is just the depth and detail of some of these things like here's a giant tree yeah. detail every and little thought in botanical right so you have the uh the what is this dome plant um one half botanical i guess uh, i'm not sure what that means but you get to see it like from the front view from the side view from mm -hmm. the top down view you get to see the stages of this like eye that blossoms That's you cool. know what i mean um so really cool things that each environment is is really showcasing hey there you are <laughs> Let's see. Oh, so this was a super cool part, right? This this was a part where Garga and Figgy made the grand appearance. And shout out to Garga for for coming through. I know uh, half the other team is you know international right now in Japan, uh, holding it down. But I thought it was insanely important that Garga showed up and and participated and and led this experience with Figgy uh, because they kind of they're creating a, a whole new experience for us. Right. And, and this tells me how dedicated they are to it, to see them like here in the, in the groundwork, testing it with us. And this was an opportunity for them to get a smaller batch of tests. Like Figgy said, uh, previous trips, right. All they had was batch numbers and ticket IDs for any, anything that any feedback anyone would make. But here uh, they were hoping for more, um, you know, more direct feedback from the community from people like this and, yeah, and more i think focus yeah more focus and i think the reason we we're doing this uh spaces uh this show and then why we did our, our friday spaces breakdown is to amplify that message right to hear what other community members experience from this and and hope that someone on the yuga team would would you know hear that and that that's to say shout out to the yuga team for actively listening and building with the community and not thinking they have the recipe and they know everything they're they're actively looking for input so um mm -hmm. you know that was really cool to hear yeah one thing i want to emphasize is both garga and figgy had an opportunity to like you know welcome everyone and kind of share like why we were all here you know they emphasize uh building with the community and one thing about the first trip and the second trip were these were very high effort, you know, experiences um, and getting feedback uh, could be really difficult, especially with the, as you can imagine, the amount of support tickets and things that they're doing to try and make sure these trips are successful. 
Um, but you know, when I think about going outside in real life, uh, it's not every day I join thousands of other people in those endeavors, right? It's like once in a while when I go on a certain experience, if I go to a, a childish Gambino concert, there's going to be thousands of people uh, around me, but it's not, I'm, I'm not doing that every day. And there was an emphasis on like having like a core group of people or friends that you go on experiences with. And, you know, maybe that, that that's a group of five people, you know, that, that you go into the other side with, and those are your friends and you go explore that together. But then there's another group of five people and then you kind of compound that and that, that makes up 20, 25 people that are doing something together. But um, really there's like a core group that you may go on to these experiences with on a more daily basis. And uh, the feedback would definitely be a little bit different than collecting feedback and hunting for that feedback on Twitter. Right. You know, yeah. where they yeah. usually have to scrape all the, the feedback that people are leaving on Twitter. So coming up with a, a more focused feedback loop uh, is something I would love to see more of with the, the, the team. Uh, and the community being able to really participate in the development and the co-development of this. And that was something that they're trying out. So I got to give it to them. Also give them a little grace uh, for, you know, being able to put this on for the first time. I can yeah. only see it improving in the future. I love, I love that Garga said, you know, initially he wanted to host it in, in a garage. Uh, but they stepped it up and and they did oh, it in the yeah. studio. So yeah, Figgy yeah. Figgy put out a tweet saying like instead of my apartment, we're over here or something like that. <laughs> so um, yeah, super dope to kind of see this, uh, meet a lot of the team members, and then and this is the moment where things got exciting. Yeah, so this is where they're showing people start to walk behind the curtain where we were presented with this right here. And basically they had this huge like half circle around this giant screen and um, they split the groups into two. Jason was in the first group. I was in the second. And you basically had to walk up to one of these computers and they would have the other side already loaded up with either your ape or a Voyager and a little name tag that's sitting right next to the to the computer and then uh also a keyboard and mouse and an xbox controller that was so, all set up i'll, I'll kind of jump in through like the first batch and you jump in with the second batch experience um as, as we went through like you know everyone took took a minute to find their seat uh myself crypto painter and vera decided that we were just going to take off and we were going to start running around because the excitement was unbearable. We, we really couldn't contain ourselves. However, that wasn't the, the appropriate strat, right? Um, there was actually a guided uh, experience where the creative director, what was his name, Sean? That's actually him right here, Santizi. Santizi, dope guy. We got to hang out with him at the uh, Back to Basics event in the evening, which was super nice. So he was playing as Curtis. Yeah, he was playing as Curtis, and he was kind of navigating where we should go. And as he kind of ran around, took us to the clubhouse, took us to a train that we'll be actively building later, kind of showed us a tree house and, you know, a few portal jumps. Um, that was what the group saw. Uh, what I got stuck doing was I got stuck under a rock in a tree because that it, it's still a test, right? So it, it, it's not uh, the exact game that it will be once it goes out. That was the whole point of the test was experiencing different things. Uh, so I was able to kind of find the group uh, with little help from Ian. So shout out to all the Yuga team for being available to us. Um, but the so thing they that basically I said, if you're lost or anything, just raise your hand and then they would have people come around and just like make sure you're good. Right. And so like a as that experience happened and, and I popped over to the group, they took this uh, what I'm going to assume is the iconic first group shot in the other side. Um, the takeaway that I had was that the skin and fur tones for some of these were insanely beautiful. Uh, mm. Captain Trippy was in uh, one of the ones I was observing, double Trippy hat, you know, and, oh, and Trippy fur. He's, he's in this yeah. video. Let me quickly look and at this guy. Yeah, just so good. 
it, so it, it looks better in person. Yeah, let's uh before we go through the entire experience, I want to know what was it like to play as your ape? It was it was funny because immediately the first thing that I notice are the sandals and the short shorts and everyone makes a comment like, "Oh, I didn't know I had shorts," <laughs> you know, or, or something like that. But it was one of those moments where I just picked up the uh, Xbox remote. I never touched the keyboard for even a second. And I couldn't help myself. I immediately had just a smile ear to ear and, and couldn't not explore. Right. And my immediate second thought was whoever decides to create, um, you know, wearable pants in the, in the other side is going to be a future millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, that was uh, one of my takeaways too. You can see the shorts were almost like a default. Like a lot of people had these like white gradient gray shorts on. Um, but what was really, really cool about just seeing the different apes was you were able to finally see, like in a PFP picture, you basically see exactly what you're seeing in this thumbnail right here. See a little bit of their chest. You see the front part of their face, but you don't get to see the back. You don't get to see the bottom. And so to see like Gene, uh, who has that really slick vest, you know, like, and then be like, oh shit, you got a BAYC skull on the back of that, you know, or, uh, I think that was really cool. And then just being able to quickly identify your friends, right? Like, I think that was one of the things is many of us kind of from knowing each other in the community, we knew each other through our PFPs, but then you translate to the other side and I can quickly see Javi, you know, with his, uh, with his ape or quickly be able to see yourself or, or whatnot. So to just to be able to be in the other side and experience and having the familiarity with other people's PFPs, it was immediately recognizable. And when I think about that five kind of core group that you might be hanging with, those are some of the things I think about, like when I'm playing Call of Duty and we're on a team, you know, in Battle Royale, it's like you get to know who your operators are and what they look like, but we already have that familiarity with PFPs. Yeah. So it makes it real easy to kind of recognize people I besides mean, just the name. In the rating room, I was talking with some others about that nice little touch of the PFP, you know, lanyard. And it, it really is just an extension of this. And in some forms, people may feel more comfortable to approach others, uh, you know, as their PFP 3D avatar and go up to someone and say, hey, you know, Captain Trippy, I'm baron von hustle i've never met you before but stoked to see you in here what are you up to you know and that might kick off an experience right and and someone said this in our recap spaces the other day on on the big x um <laughs> uh that the board apes aren't going to end up being like a celebrity in a sense in in the other space because the ip right you're going to notice that that's gary and that's uh gene and that's whoever you know and and, and you know the character and and the 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 person behind it so there's a lot of value in that and sean what did figgy say that all ten thousand of the board ape yacht club 3d avatars were almost ready yeah you there didn't... was a few people that didn't like you can see right here you got rich poor you got sarah star girl who is a voyager oh. right yeah. and yeah. so it was like she wasn't able to play as her ape, and most likely it was because she had a dress on. Right. And the dress, a lot of the tops are kind of like, to, you know, modeled to the top part of the ape. So right. having to model it on the bottom, like it, the dress connecting to both the legs and the body, um, there's definitely a little more attention that's required for those models. And he mentioned, you know, almost all 10,000 models are ready. Uh, you see someone like Peter here with the full oh, BAYC jumpsuit. Outfit. And then, you know what? Like looking at the, uh, the very, just the PFP, um, you you may not notice that he has a BAYC belt on. You know what I mean? Man, so I, it's so stuff if, like that that I thought was really dope. Out of this picture, I'm realizing how many board apes have pants on and how many board apes have shorts on because he's the only one with pants on. So. <laughs> That's an yeah. interesting observation. And Gene has some Gene shorts on. So oh. I guess that makes sense. All right. Um, so, um, yeah, it, I thought it was really dope just being able to play as your PFP. Now, what we do know is 
Bored apes, mutant apes, me bits, and crypto punks are avatars that are going to be uh, ready for the other side at some point. Did you, you say doggos I mean? too? Uh, no, I didn't say doggos. I think they're but, one of them too. Oh, uh, I I just remember on the uh, the article that when they were saying like, hey, we're working on 3D avatars, and if you're a board ape, uh, Mebit, M A Y C, and CryptoPunk, that you you know you'll be able to to show up uh, and be ready for the other side. So I think um, those are all things that are obviously still in development, but they're working on that for all these other projects. I, I believe we'll have the same effect, right? Because uh, they even said like, hey, if you're a Voyager, we want your feedback too on what's it like to be a Voyager? What's right. it like to be a Voyager amongst other apes? You know, and well, um, not every single person that attended the event even had apes. So right. it was great to probably collect some of that feedback knowing that every single project will eventually have the tools to be able to import their avatars and get their community represented. Well, when so, you think about like how modest uh, is, is a coda and modest was at the event and, and he, he used uh, the av the Avenger av or what's it called? The avatar. Right. Um, but he said he was like all of a sudden in awe of, of apes and wishing he had one, right. Cause of that aesthetic and that extra, you know, wow factor it really had. So it's interesting to get that kind of feedback from just having that experience right there in real time. Look at that joy oh, on her face, man. Yeah, real quick. Um, did you end up using the controller or the keyboard that's, and mouse? That's all I used was the controller. I never touched the oh, keyboard. Really? I played so. most of it with the keyboard and mouse, um, but I ended up like sitting back on, on the chair playing with the controller. And that was like one of the benefits of having the control is just being able to like take a step back from the computer screen. I'm not hunched over and I was able well, to kind of kick it and just play around. So I, I liked just, having the option for both. I'm so much more familiar with Xbox and, and PS, right? And this was an Xbox controller basically. So what I used it for a lot was the panning. They had awesome panning of the camera. So we yeah. were able to situate our, our ape wherever we chose and then, navigate the camera around so sean there was some beautiful sunsets you yeah. know there, there was some beautiful aesthetics i was just trying to set that that visual memory for myself by by you know spinning the camera around with the uh, controller that was the first thing i did um when i got to my computer i was like oh shit there's my ape this must be me confirmed it was and then I immediately just while waiting for everyone to kind of get situated, uh, I didn't venture off too far, but I ended up just trying to climb like a high point and uh, tried to just, you know, explore, see what I can do in the horizon. And what was dope was, uh, and I'll pull up, I'll pull up this right here. This is me flying down from one of those high points. And then I noticed there was the Gucci trail coming out so you can see the striped shirt you can see the cheetah print what you can't see is the gold earring mm -hmm. uh, but you know i was able to go down and i was like oh shit what is this and uh you see these double g's the interlocking g's like right out of the feet and uh this green and red and gold trail with these little gucci symbols kind of coming out of it uh, and I thought that was like such a cool little touch that I didn't expect. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, I think That's in our group, it was only Javier and myself that had it. And at, up to this point, I actually thought that was just for the CODAs from the CODA pendant. But so, so did I. this can happen on your avatar. Yeah, I had that in, on, on mine as well. And you know, someone asked the question, do, do you do you get that effect when you're walking as well? And it's only when you're doing this glide feature and it has this kind of like Fortnite flying kind of vibe. So that was that was cool to see, because at first on my screen, I just thought that was normal. I didn't realize that was the Gucci, you know, uh, stream, as it were. So that was kind of cool to have that extra. Yeah. And as far as what how this trail can come about, that's not to say like when you walk or run, they couldn't implement something like that. But I think this was like a way to test it out because I believe it was hard coded for this 
particular case. We didn't connect our wallets. We didn't do any of that. This stuff was preloaded for us. We didn't have to log in, go through some sort of screen. And I think that also kind of goes to show the type of feedback was really to, sh they stripped away a lot of the features such as the heads up display. Uh, there was really no heads up display, no radar, no map or anything like that. Um, they, they stripped away uh, voice chat, right? Or any chat features. Like that wasn't even a focus. There was no spatial kind of audio where we can hear each other. It was really us talking to each other in the room yeah. and Santizi walking us through with Curtis on the big screen. Yeah, that seemed and, to be the primary thing was having our apes tested and and you know the the um, all of the three D avatars just in that kind of experience seemed to be the main point. So uh, you better believe as I'm running through the other side, I'm just constantly finding ways to like go off of these little ledges. Even if we're running in a straight line as a group, I'm looking oh. for ways I just keep jumping. <laughs> so, so let's go back to this point too. In this particular deed that they that they allowed us to play on was a five uh, a five uh, tier deed, right? So yeah, tier this, five environment deed. This was quite a large deed, and it, it was quite expansive. And as I started to run around you know, and, and started to imagine like, what would I terraform? What would I adjust? What would I build? Um, you, you realize that depending on the, the, the size of the deed, you're going to have a lot of options for space and, and creativity. Right. So that was yeah. a big takeaway from this is that a tier no, five point. is huge. So he prefaced that in the beginning, he's like, what you're about to experience is an environment tier five, which is approximately 2.4 square kilometers large and that's I, I didn't really know how to contextualize that i'm like you know, how, how large is that um but going through and exploring i'm like yo there's plenty of room yeah. to do so many different things and uh what we ended up doing as a group was santisi kind of led us through some different points of interest uh, in this case right here, we're about to pull up to this spot called Swamp Yachts. And it had, he mentioned like the swamp, the, the yachts weren't working right now, um, but he still wanted to check them out. And you can see this like trippy DMT looking, you know, uh, yacht that was available. And hey, you know what? Who knows if we'll be able to actually use these to ride they, around the other side together as a larger group. He did insinuate that they would be moving uh, and that there was other yachts out there when he, he made a comment to our run, like, yeah, that'll be moving. Uh, there's a train that will be always moving as well um, kind of thing. So it sounds like there's going to be a lot of active uh, components to this game that they're not just going to be stagnant, you know. Yeah, you can see the train tracks right above it, actually. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for those that are 10K TFers, that was really interesting to see. Like, oh, shit, there's a train. And the train had these different carts that were all th themed, you know. So one seemed like it was a mutant theme. Uh, there was this other more futuristic one with, like, red lasers. It kind of reminded me of a Reaver. <laughs> But uh, in the very be like front of the train, there was like the front of the train, but it had this like portal that was kind of built into it. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, oh, that's interesting. Like, I wonder if this train can actually go through different dimensions as well. Right. But if that portal wasn't active, it was almost like it was a, a mount, like a not non-functioning portal at the moment. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was cool to see those yachts. The environment, was, the environment. Oh, go ahead. There were certain things throughout it before we got to this part as he was giving us the tour that uh, he would reference and say, oh, there might be something there in the future, you know? So one like, of the what? things was like the toilet that Curtis got the key out of in the future. Uh, early on when we explored, that was one of the first things we saw. And it was just a side outhouse with a lock on it. And he said, oh, something might come out of that later. And then just kept moving on. You know, so yeah. just like in passing, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, you can see like how wow, it's just kind of neat. You, you know, you don't see how far it goes out, but you can see the scale of like these houses and all of the that. Lighting and you, is amazing. 
Yeah, the lighting was really beautiful. And uh, same with the reflections. Um, when you went to a certain area, uh, it did almost look like there was an achievement that popped up. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you discovered the mutant cavern or something like that, right. you know? Or you discovered the yacht club. Uh, and uh, it seemed like that was also an incentive for people to just go explore in the environment and get a get some satisfaction on like being able to discover things throughout you know i want to rewind back talking about discovering things um there's this part where anyone in 10 ktf would maybe recognize this doom buggy and so this is in the middle of the swamp you can see the train tracks kind of in the background that went all around the island and the doom buggy is just like completely crashed into you know, some, some, some bushes. And there was this sign here. And then over here on the right, there was the structure maker, which shows up in the 10 KTF lore uh, that's in the water and uh, kind of halfway out, halfway in. And the sign said clutch, gold, ignition, silver, throttle, bronze. And at the time, we were just like, what does this mean? Like, we need to remember this so that when we get out and we get our phones back, because our phones were locked up, yeah, you know, we need to be able to share this alpha with the community. And I didn't sure even enough, notice that at all during the experience, man. Dude, that like, that's a point I want to make too. Like, uh, but like sure enough, those ended up being three missions that are available to enroll right now. So if you like as a community we want to load out appropriately for those three missions. And it was great to be able to have that 10 KTFM space almost immediately after to really help connect what were the clues and the missions that were out that we had no idea about. Uh, and then be able to share this, this alpha from the other side test with the rest of the community. And to me, it kind of showcased something where we're, a, we're, we're experiencing clues from one project and we're having to go to the other side to get more information on how we can solve it, you know? So for Battletown Season 2 and 10KTF, all of a sudden there's some people on the other side that are putting together some things and the storyline shows up. And so to the point of like how some people may not have noticed it or they're not in 10 KTF, they may very well be in the other side and be able to see these different elements. We're like, oh shit, is that what that was? Oh, that's part of 10 KTF. Like all of a sudden they're coming across parts of the storyline from these different projects, which kind of showcases the value of this center Island and how they can work in story line uh, from multiple projects and really expose it to the larger other side community or anyone that's on the other side. And so yeah. I see it as a very immersive kind of thing that, that could happen where you have story that's in the other side, but it relates it to other things going on, um, you know, outside of this particular metaverse. I mean, like like Captain uh, Other Not is saying, it, it'll all be on the other side soon, right? And so everything's leading to the other side. I think that's where all the roads are going to tie multiple stories together. Uh, so as any of us look forward to this, it, it, it's always going to behoove us to be aware of other projects that are Yuga related because they're going to touch, you know, and and we've seen that since the first trip with Wag Me Sun's glasses. So to, to see his dune buggy there. It made sense. But to my point earlier is I didn't even see that. I was so we only had 20 minutes for this whole experience. Right. And so I was so focused on what I was doing and trying to catch up and all this that I was standing right there on that orb uh, with everyone else. But I didn't notice all the text and everything because it was just a an excitement overload and a lot to take in all at once because you're trying to scan as much as you can. You're trying to see everything uh, while you're trying to listen to to the guidance, you know, of of the creative uh, director showing us what they're trying to show us simultaneously. So, yeah. What do you think of the, what do you think of the clubhouse? It was cool. There, there was three layers to it. There's, you know, your, your medium, your base, uh, your, your downstairs, which I like the downstairs the most, the mutant uh, 
basement was really, really appealing. Um, then the top was, you know, it was pretty cool. But I look forward to seeing what it's going to look like once people are in it. Because aesthetically, it's cool. It, it, it looks exactly like how you would imagine it. But all those people hanging out in there, I just couldn't stop thinking, like, what is that experience going to be like to go into the Board Ape Swamp House bar and and engage with people? You know, like, how is that going to work once we have that that sound uh, opportunity, right, to, to hear people close and far? Yeah. And that's, that's where my mind started going. I it's can like, imagine things like, you know, a town hall type thing or you know, things where we have like a conversation that could be really cool. Um, I did notice the, the arcade, it said out of order. Uh, there was a lot of different apes that were featured uh, on the walls, which was cool to see. I'm like, Oh shit. You know, I know that ape. Oh, there's Mr. a lot e. of pee pee man. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. This, this was a cool part right here. This was a mutant cave. And I don't know if they, they showed it in the video, but when you come out of that mutant cave, that was, for me, the most stunning visually in the entire experience was this beautiful, gigantic uh, skull with this mutant green ooze coming out. Uh, but what caught my attention about this particular moment is how they reference that they're going to be future art and, you know, graffiti uh, style art placement there in the future, which made me think, oh, really? Yeah, this is going to yeah. be a place where we can go and manipulate it as a group, you know, so that'll be interesting. Oh, kind of like the pixel wall. Yeah, in like the bathroom. it. It, it made me think that on our own deeds, like we'll be able to change things, but maybe there's going to be like, you know, board ape deeds where it's like anyone could change anything or there's certain areas where you're allowed to change things or. Or if you have a mutant, you can put up stuff in the mutant ca uh, cavern. Yeah, maybe. I mean, there's That'd a lot cool. of possibilities still. Yeah. So um, it was uh, it was pretty sick to just kind of go through some of those things. Um, there were definitely some elements of heavy metal that showed up in the swamp. There was a bunch of heavy metal crates. You know, it didn't necessarily look like power sources. They looked like crates that said heavy metal on it. And they were all around this like green portal that um, Santisi, who was leading us through it, called the rift. And or like when you went through it, it led you to this large gate that was closed with like large steel walls. And uh, I forgot what it said, something like like it can't open or something like that. But um, I think they were just hinting at like this is going to open pretty soon. So, yeah. you know, I mean, immediately, Sean, could you not did, did you not think that's where the heavy metal arena was? Like that's where my mind went was like, or maybe something like it. Cause it, there was, that was like one of the few things that I saw that they said, Oh, that's closed. But like, maybe something will happen there in the future. Right. Like I don't see why they would be build a door if they wouldn't let us through the door at some point. Yeah. Another kind of neat little thing that uh, we ended up catching that's not in this video was you see how like you can see different floating land plots that were over here. There was one that had the Hong Kong skyline. And so oh, I, I think a lot that. of people are anticipating some sort of interact digitally interactive ape fest experience. And it very well could be on the other side, like many had hoped. So, I mean, you know, how sick would it be if we we're all able to see like a virtual Hong Kong? Uh, where people who aren't in Hong Kong still get to experience some of the vibes and things uh, at AFES. I mean, I, Herman I Herman that said sick. that that they do that last year, so let's hold them to it. You know, <laughs> I hope yeah. so, man. It'll be exciting. But you're, I didn't, I didn't even see that. There was so much in this little experience. <laughs> yeah, there you are, buddy. I know, right? <laughs> With your grin. Um, and then finally, there's this giant hand because uh, we're all running across this railroad oh. track and there's this giant mech hand that's holding up. There's you um, that's holding up the screen and it just had this Legends of the Mara loop that was right there. And this was in the middle of an amphitheater. I think there was, if I'm not mistaken, there was probably another scene where it shows the amphitheater from the top down but it looked like a giant outdoor kind of like red rock vibe 
you know, place where people can sit, there was seating and they had that big screen. But after that, they gave us five minutes to just go explore, you know? So everyone got to just go explore after this and go on their own ways for about five minutes. Um, can and you, can and then they pushing? say again, can you keep pushing the video forward? Yeah. Okay, go back. Sorry. So, yep. So that was it. You know, we got to explore. And then after we were done exploring, they kind of told us to get off the, our computers. Uh, as you can see here, people standing around in the back, people who were in the first group were kind of lingering back there. And I believe that's where you went to the bathroom. Yeah, because <laughs> like, so I saw you guys wrapping it up, and I had seven ape waters. So I was like, I'm going to go run, hit the head real quick. Uh, I come back, you know, la, 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 and the girl at the door is like, run, you missed something. And so I full on sprint into the studio. I come in and everyone's like, yay, that was the best. Awesome. I can't wait. I hope no one missed that. And uh, I walked in like, what did I miss? <laughs> so, so, Sean, what did I miss? So um, we were surprised with this or like, oh, yeah, you know, kind of like a one more thing type thing. And then. On the big screen, you hear this this part kind of pull up right here, uh, which I'll, I'll play the the music and the audio. We just it kind of just hits you. So that little piece right there is taken from the trailer, and clearly you see some sick codas. You also see a farmer. Uh, a hunter and an enchanter Mara kind of right over here. And so you see these cards and man, it's hard for me to like even think about what I saw because it all just happened so quickly too. Um, but clearly it's a card game and you see like these different cards and they are loaded up with, uh, you know, in, in the uh, similar to the screenshot that we've already seen. Um, but what was what stood out to me was it said something about like team, like first it showed one of the big kind of creatures that came out of the second trip at the very end of the second trip. You know how you had that really crazy creature, that right. dragon looking creature thing, and just like go raw. Um, you saw that kind of come out, but then there was like quick edits where it flashed between like multiple creatures. So right. immediately I was like, oh shit, that may have been, that may very well have been part of the shattered, which we know is attacking the other side. And um, according to the legends of the Mara blog. And so uh, clearly there's these large bosses of the shattered, uh, they didn't show anything with like farming or anything like that. In fact, we didn't see any Maras either in the, the trailer, not that I remember. And um, what we did see is it said like team up and then it had five different codas similar to like what we're seeing here, but five codas. And they were kind of sitting at the bottom of the screen, similar to that gameplay uh, screenshot that we saw. And then you see in the background behind the cards, you see the the, the shattered, you know, attacking. And uh, they were like quick at it. So it was really meant to be like action packed showcase that there's a lot of action in this game, even though the cards are completely static. Right. Um, but then uh, toward the toward the end, it shows like these cards like charging up. And so you see this like blue glow around them and then all five of the cards which each of them had a coda in it started to beam against the shattered that was in the background and then it showed uh it earning some sort of legendary you know reward or loot box um and it showed different types of loot boxes right. that it had uh and then you know quickly end ended and to me the impression was like you know what? For people that didn't know what Legends of the Mara was, they're going to see that it's a card game 
And I think that'll be news for a lot of people who may not have realized that Legends of the Mara and Other Side uh, is also a card game. Yeah. And, and, and uh, it's nothing it, like heavy metal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, also that there was a lot of beautiful animation of the the creatures that are behind the cards. Uh, you get to see the beautiful environment as the backdrop of it. And so to me, it wasn't like it kind of got rid of me thinking it would be like a 2D static game, whereas like, yes, the cards were static, but everything else was full of animation and I really helped immerse you into the storytelling but very okay. quick very quick edits um but i would say like it looked really good and for people that you know uh see this as a card game they're probably gonna be like yo that looks like a really sick card game too so so everyone else got to see it on this gigantic screen sean will you get to that part where where we see the gigantic screen that everyone saw it on um I, I want to say real quick, shout out to Figgy and uh, PM for making the magic happen for me because uh, they allowed me to watch it on a cell phone, um, which didn't have the same impact. I'm going to be honest with you because you guys had this large like 60 by 90 foot screen. Maybe I'm exa exaggerating, but it was enormous. Uh, and, and for me, what I took away was the loot boxes look cool. There's going to be a variety of them. The way there, there's some kind of dynamic energy at play when you put when you play your cards, it looks like they react. There's there's some sizzle to it, right? There's a little animation. There, there's some liveliness that comes to it. Um, but what I did go like, oh, that was interesting, was the larger characters I thought would be more dynamic, and they actually did look like 2D to me when I saw them. So it 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 was like the the bad guys, you know, maybe there's more. Uh, visualization that we didn't get to see with how it how it interacts when they get beaten up or whatever but that was my only thought of like oh that didn't look as as cool as i thought it was going to when it beat the boss but they may have just showed us such a little clip that that we didn't get the whole scene you know so from what i took away uh i'm i'm super happy that i have even one coda to play because they look like they're going to be quite powerful yeah you know what uh I think it's going to get people excited. I, I I was expecting like by the time we got out of this, maybe they released the trailer as well. I thought so too. <laughs> but uh, you know what? I feel for those that are just eager to see this trailer. And um, I think we'll see it soon. Um, I, I wouldn't say there's any alpha or anything like that in the trailer, but it could definitely get people hyped up about legends of the Mara. Right. You know, because I still come across like different friends within the community that don't quite grasp what Legends of the Mar is. And when I tie it back into like, how come we didn't see actual Mara in this game? Like I didn't see anything about farming. I didn't see, like all all I saw was like trying to defeat some shattered and codas doing that, you know, with the coda cards. Right. Um, and so to me, I, I'm really interested on like, what does it mean by team up? Right. Because not everyone ha can relate to having five codas, even right. at that. Right. And then also, you know, going back to the storyline in season one, the shades, which are the spirits, they are trying to fight off the shattered and just kind of suppress them. Right. Um, from inhabiting the other side. Uh, but then some of them kind of retreated into some hospitable vessels while others banded together to try and keep the keep the shattered away. Yeah. And so while shades are in vessels, technically, I think season one, we're going to see a lot of people nesting their vessels. Right. So what could we be doing in the meantime? We know codas, they don't need to nest. So maybe we're seeing a little glimpse of what season one could look like. Uh, that would make sense, right? Yeah, that yeah. would make sense. Like the codas get to work right away. Potentially, as well as, you know, perhaps some other things that we would be able to do. I think there's, you know, I don't want to go too far into speculation, speculation but that kind of explained why, like, why did we see mostly like codas? You know, right, I right. can't. I'd have to watch that trailer again to see like what else I saw, but 
again, everything was so quick. I'll just leave it at like my initial impression was I was hyped. So well, and I and, can't and wait for other people to get act on. Other not says Kodas and maybe heavies, you know. And we saw Jeff sitting at the table with Curtis. Uh, so you never know what what the friend component will be once it gets there. Maybe heavies play in this game. Who knows, right? So yeah, really uh, cool user interface uh, for a card game, in my opinion. Like if you kind of compared it to other card games that you're seeing out there. I would say, you know, this is something that will probably get you really excited. Yeah, I've had people ask me, is it like Hearthstone? Uh, someone says, is it like Slay the Spire? I'm not familiar with any of these games. So I've actually been YouTube uh, searching Hearthstone and, and, and Magic and trying to get familiar with the concept of how these games will work. But I just can't wait till they give us a little rule and, and put this out. And this right here, guys, was an iconic moment. Sean, I, my, my only regret from the day truly was that you and I didn't get a picture together in front of this uh, yeah. just alone. But we did we did get a, a beautiful group photo here. We, we took a, a photo with the, the new starting five for Yuga, uh, just jokes aside. But this was a really cool um opportunity and and anyone watching from the yuga team i just want to say thank you for allowing us to to participate earlier someone had asked uh how did they go ahead and, and select us you know the people that that got there and yeah you know I, i'll i'll take this at first um we didn't know uh but in the space ian uh idb uh said on invites the team did our best to invite apes who a were in la L in the LA area or could drive to LA easily. Some ex uh, some exceptions were made for various reasons like BAYC community council members. B had apes and multiple other deeds and C had traits that were, we were interested in testing. So hopefully they do more of this, you know, yeah. because I could see this is like there, you know, things didn't go perfect either with this test. Like I was initially in the first group, go to the computers to all of a sudden find out my ape's not there. Uh, but, and then but we had to be like, hey, reset. Let's that didn't have a, that anything out. to do with the, the, the metaverse itself. You know what I mean? So that was like a fumble, but not a, a metaverse fumble in a sense. Yeah, no, it was more operations, like just really creating this experience with the community. Right. And so that's why I hope to see this happen more. Um, in different development stages and for different purposes, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, hat tip to Yuga team to kicking this off. Uh, really fortunate and privileged to be a part of this uh, initial experience. And I hope to see these test groups uh, happen more often. Yeah, absolutely, man. And for anyone who uh, is curious, you know, what else we got cooking up? I know a lot of people had given us a lot of great feedback about content and programming. So stay tuned for, for more uh, content and programming from other space FM, because we actually felt really blessed by hanging out with the community and getting reinvigorated by all the energy that you guys uh, reciprocated to us and reflected to us from, from what we've been putting down. So, you know, we're, we're excited about year two of other space FM excited about all the content and, and programming that we're going to deliver to you guys. And just really excited to continue to provide value and opportunity for people to come together and then showcase what you guys are creating as well. So, you know, as, as we grow, if you find yourself, uh, doing something awesome in the metaverse and you want to spread that that you know message uh, connect with us and, and let's figure out if that's something we can help you uh, expand upon awesome i want to thank everyone who was able to tune in jason appreciate you uh jumping on and uh you know just get having some setting some time for both of us to reflect on this experience yeah, was glad to share another awesome experience with you uh, along this journey and yeah, I appreciate everyone for tapping in today. Peace, everyone. All right, bye.